Hi everyone, it's Mandy and today I'm here to show you how to make a chicken pill treat for a treat for your dog so you can easily give them the pill, the medication that they need to take on a daily basis. Or if it's just um, they happen to be on medication right now. My name is Mandy Lee and I have a dog with epilepsy. Her name is Ruby. She's a golden retriever and she is on seizure meds that she will take for the rest of her life. So in my journey, as I've learned with Ruby, I have been on a mission to make a healthier pill treat to give her rather than buy the pill treats that are pre-packaged in the store, in the green package. If you have ever used them, you know which one I'm talking about. Um, if you are using them and they work for your dog, that's great. I know that they can be very convenient. I know when I um, started to explore why Ruby was continuing to have seizures even while I was medicating her, um, I did have a strong belief that food was playing a role in that. And so that took me down this path of exploring what else I could be doing with her to help support the medication in reducing her seizures. And I will say, stopping using those treats, um, I did see a reduction in seizures. So um, if you get a chance, just look at the back of the package and see what kinds of ingredients that those treats have in them and you may decide to not use them as often. And so that's what I'm here to show you today is that you can very easily make your own at home. Um, I make a batch that lasts about a week and I tend to just rotate through the different recipes that I have. Um, we just finished up her last peanut butter pill treat this morning. So I'm here to make the next batch. And for this batch, I'm going to make my chicken pill treat recipe. Um, Ruby loves it. And it is so simple that I wanted to share it for you here today. Um, I have a hack that I came up with as I was developing all of these recipes. And I started to think about what is an easier way to use some of the different meats, um, vegetables, and fruits without me having to get out blenders or any sort of appliances because anything that I'm gonna create is gonna be as easy as possible with as little cleanup as possible. Um, and so one of my hacks has been baby food. And I've always have said if it's safe for babies, it's gonna be safe for my dog. So the only caution here is to know your dog, know what your dog um, can have, can't have. Um, some dogs have a sensitivity to chicken, so you wanna be aware of that. Ruby does not. We use it on a regular basis with her and, and, it, and it works very well. Um, if you saw one of my previous videos, I showed how to use chicken breast to make pill treats. So you can use actually a chunk of cooked chicken breast to put the pill in. So that's a frequent one I use with her. This is one that I use with her on a regular basis as well. So um, just know what your dog can have, can't have. You can always run things by your veterinarian. I am not a vet. I'm not a specialist in any way, but I am a dog owner of a dog that happens to have canine epilepsy, and I've learned a lot of things along the way. And so one of the things that I've learned is you just have to be really aware and observe your dog for what works and what doesn't work for them. So just kind of keep that in mind. So let's get to the recipe. Um, this one calls for brown rice flour. Now, any of the recipes that I'm ever gonna teach you, if I didn't have brown rice flour today, I would be using um, oat flour or another flour that I might have. Um, with You can use white flour, just the only caution is that there is some information out there that says it can be unsafe to eat raw white flour. And because these treats are not baked or cooked in any way, um, please just look up online. You can find a rest, you can find online how to just bake your white flour ahead of time uh, before using it. 
So, um, but with any of the other flowers, you don't have to worry about that. So I'm gonna use four tablespoons of brown rice flour. For this one, all you'll need is a bowl, a measuring spoon for a tablespoon, and a spoon to stir. Then I'm gonna use one tablespoon of beef gelatin. So beef gelatin is a collagen um, it's not the dessert gelatin, so keep that in mind. It's an actual beef gelatin. But what it does is it really helps, it's a binder. Um, it helps hold the tree together, it helps create that consistency, and then um, it's also is very healthy for dogs as well, especially for dogs with seizures. Um, not only is it good for Ruby's joints, um, it is also has been shown to be very healthy for the brain. So you're going to find a four ounce jar of the chicken baby food. I have been using this brand that that is all, all it is, is just chicken and chicken broth. Those are the only ingredients in it. And I really like it. I've found that it has worked well with her. So I just pour that entire jar in. And then you are gonna use four ounces of water. The nice thing is, is just use the jar. And then you're not wasting anything. So let me get that. This is a great way to get kind of all the little bits that are left. And I will tell you, as soon as I popped this jar over, um, my little friend Ruby here has come running over to see what I am making. All right, so we've got the brown rice flour, the beef gelatin, and the chicken baby food. Oh, let me grab a spoon. So all I'm gonna do next is just mix it up. And all you're doing is you're making a dough. dough if it seems a little too wet you can always add a little bit more flour if it seems too dry you can add a little bit more liquid to it I would just add if you have a little bit of chicken broth you can use that um, that is also a variation on this instead of using water you could actually use chicken broth or bone broth instead of the water um, if you feel like your dough is still a little bit too wet to be able to form it into the treats, you can also set it in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes and it will be become a little bit more solid, maybe a little bit more easy to use. Now you have options like I've shown in some of the other videos is I've now created this dough ball. You could leave it just like this, put it in an airtight container, put it in the fridge, and pinch off what you need. That is really helpful for if you are needing to give different sizes of medications, like a capsule one time, a tablet another time, then you can be pulling off just the certain amounts you need. Or else you can create um, the actual pill treats to then have them on hand and ready. Uh, so let me grab a container that I will be keeping them in. So to form, I take a chunk off. I just roll it and then I have a nice little ball here. I will just stick my index finger in and then I form it around my index finger and it kind of creates this nice little treat with a little bit of a dent in it that makes it very easy then to slip the pill into. Um, that's an option. Another option would be if you want to just prep things a little bit ahead of time but you're not going to put that indent is just to make the little dough ball 
and actually just put this dough ball right into the container. Um, I know for capsules, I often will, rather than having the indent, I will flatten out that dough ball and then I'll just put the capsule in there and roll the dough around it just to make it a little bit more, it's just easier it seems like for capsules or uh, any sort of bigger pill rather than trying to put it into a little indent. So those are some options that you can do. Um, I'm gonna continue on and create the pill treat size that work for Ruby and fill up this tray and then we will be good for the week. Thank you for watching today and I plan on sh sharing many more of my recipes with you. Whoops. And so keep checking back and I will have more options. Have a good day. Bye.